Hi, this is TDS Dave, uh, doing my first Blender tutorial on the subject from Angelica Duta uh, from YouTube. She's done quite a nice video on taking the default cube and turning it into a die. Um, there are some uh, areas where I think she could have taken some shortcuts in the modelling and uh, this video is in a sense to complement hers. It, it's, uh, just to uh, illustrate some of the shortcuts that may uh, help in other modeling problems that people come across. Okay, let's begin. Um, to begin with, I'm going to change the view of the default cube to be a wireframe. So we've got a kind of rough reference to the scales of things we'll be modeling. Uh, I'm going to be adding a UV sphere and chopping it in half as Angelica did to represent a dot. Um, if you click this button, you should be able to see the hidden vertices behind the forward facing ones. And we need to select the bottom half and press delete to remove those. So now we have our half sphere. Um, we need to do a bit of scaling, so scaling on the axes now. And uh, we're going to edit it so that the, uh, using proportional editing, so that we can flatten it. So connected, uh, I'm going to hide the hidden vertices for convenience. And selecting the top one. As you can see, the whole mesh is moving, so that means our proportional editing is too strong at the moment. And we can reduce that effect by using the page up and page down keys. Okay, that's looking pretty flat. And we want it to rest on the uh, zero z axis so get as close as we can um, now I still think it's gonna be a bit too um, protrude too much from the surface of our die so we'll scale it again in the Z axis by uh, say okay, so now we have a flat dot lined up again on the zero Z axis. Okay, so we have a dot. Uh, we'll give it a quick uh, texture. Um, Angelica uses cycles, so I'll use that here as well. Um, dots can be black. Uh, I might come back to do something with that uh, later. Um, now we need to work on how to make use of this dot on the surface of the die. So to do that, we're going to use um, Jubilee Faces, uh, which is a, a quite neat technique where uh, if you take a mesh, uh, you can have every one of its faces uh, represent an object, another mesh perhaps, um, and in that way you can duplicate uh, the object across all of the surface of your mesh. So with a dice, um, we, we know a dice has um, six digits, six numbers represented on its surface and they are arranged in uh, uh, rows and columns and along diagonals and um, it, the position of all the dots pretty much marries up with a, uh, a position on a 3x3 three three grid so what we're going to do is we're going to delete rather we're going to duplicate the original uh, cube and leave the duplicate in a 
exactly the same spot and name this as the uh, die dots. Uh, we'll change it so that we can see it as a solid object now. And as we have three rows and three columns on each face in which a, a dot for the number can be present, uh, we need to do a subdivision on this uh, and basically give ourselves those three rows and three columns. Um, finding the subdivide, that. Uh, two cuts. As you can see, we have our three rows and three columns now, so the number six would be one, two, three, four, five, six, and the three would be one, two, three, number one just the center, etc. etc. So, uh, what we can do now is uh, do our duplication. So, to do the duplication on the objects, you need to go down into the properties and make a selection on the faces in the duplication option. Um, take our dot, uh, which we haven't renamed, uh, here we go, uh, call it dot, and we need to parent that to uh, the object on which we want it to appear as faces. So we'll parent it now and you can see that it seems to have worked on the top, but we seem to have some problems with it here. It seems to fall. And that's because uh, if you haven't uh, applied your rotations and scales to your object, uh, the duplication doesn't seem to work as you might expect. So just uh, applying the rotation and scale, and you can see now that it's sorted out those deformed dots on the surface and all of our surfaces have now got uh, nine dots. So um, now duplication on faces of course means that if a face isn't there we can there will not be a dot there. So the way we construct our numbers on the die is to remove some faces. Um, so if we start enough here on the front view, uh, we decide this is number six, selecting faces, we can delete these faces and leave ourselves with six dots on this face. Move to the back, uh, we know a dice, uh, the opposite faces always add up to seven, so with six on the front, we know that only one can be on the back, so we can delete all of these faces. Going to the right, uh, if we model this as the 5 and 2, so uh, 5 is going to look like this, and the left, uh, this is our 2, so we can choose how our 2 looks as. Uh, choose to be diagonal. So. And then um, our remaining are the 4 and the 3. So on the top and bottom, we'll do a, a, a 3 on the top. Now uh, we essentially have what we need. So the thing about duplicate faces is uh, the original dot um, that won't appear in the render. The actual object supporting the faces that are being duplicated upon that doesn't appear in the render. Only the object that is being duplicated on those faces will appear. So these areas and faces here won't appear in the render, whilst the dot here will. So if we now do a quick render, 
we have our dice. So with a little more work on the uh, materials and uh, well, a uh, bevel's been applied to the actual shape of the die. We can get a reasonable approximation of what the uh, die looks like. Um, it's a simple approach, perhaps not the most accurate, but it's uh, yeah. I find uh, at least duplicate faces and, and uh, understanding them uh, are, are quite useful thing for. Uh, quite a few scenarios. I uh, hope this is of some use. Uh, have a good day. Bye.